Hello. At the beginning of last week's show, I talked about the hardest logic problem in the world, and some viewers have been in touch to say I didn't get it completely right. In the original version, which was devised by the American philosopher and logician George Boulos, it's not three natives on an island, it's three gods. And one always tells the truth and one always lies and one tells the truth and lies at random. They only say ya and da and you don't have a translation. So, just to clarify after last week's error, that's the gist. Three unearthly creatures sit answering questions and it's not clear who they are, why they're there or what they're on about. Let's meet the teams. <laughs> On my right, John Payne, a politics and economics student who befriended a pig on a recent trip to Nicaragua. Richard Arthur, a geography and geology teacher who was once found sleeping next to a bass speaker in a nightclub. And their captain, Sanjoy Sen, a chemical engineer who was led away for questioning at the Che Guevara Monument in Cuba. United by a love of long walks, they are the wanderers. Now, in your Only Connect history, you've beaten the pedagogues and the inquisitors to make it through to the third round. What are your feelings about Only Connect so far? Going well so far, two wins out of two. But in both games, we've been really hauled in on the, uh, the missing vowels round. So we've been practicing that and uh, generally pressing buttons as fast as we can. What a waste of time, it's been canceled. It hasn't, we'll be playing it at the end. You are facing tonight on my left, Mark Oxley, a physiotherapist who works for the Toulouse Rugby League team though he has never visited Toulouse. John Wilson, a retail assistant who dresses up as Father Christmas every year. And their captain, Mick Lee, a chemical engineer who has 83 former housemates. United by a love of long boats, they are the Vikings. Now, your team has beaten the geocachers and the parishioners to get through. What advice have you given your teammates about the next stage? Well, we've looked deeply at our performance and I think what we need to do is answer questions uh, correctly. Well, how can you do that unless I start asking them? So, Wanderers, you won the toss, but you've decided to put your opponents in first. Spotlight on you, Vikings. Which hieroglyph would you like? Um, horned Viper, please. The Horned Viper. What is the connection between these apparently random picture clues? Here's the first. It's a mirror, but it's in character. Is, it, is that from Goodfellas? I uh, saw so Jimmy. Um, next, please. Boris Karloff, yeah. As Dracula. Uh, as Dracula. So Dracula and Jimmy. Our good fellas. It's going to have to be next. Yeah, next place. That's John Ketley. John Ketley's a weather man. Oh, that's Robert Robert De Niro's waiting. waiting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, they're all featuring the title of songs. Coming in after three clues, you get two points. You didn't need to see the last clue. Talk me through what we're looking at. OK, Betty Davies' eyes. Um, John Ketley is a weatherman by a tribe of toffs, was that? That's right, yes. Oh, yeah, solid. Oh, is that Bella Lugosi? Bella oh, Lugosi's dead. dead. Yes, a Bauhaus Bauhaus. song, Bella yeah. Lugosi's dead, and there yeah. he is as Dracula in 1956. And uh, Robert De Niro's waiting. By? Bananarama. Bananarama, that's right. Yes, the, the, the Betty Davies' eyes. Originally Jackie DeShannon, but the, the Kim Khan's cover is better known. Very well done, well spotted. Over to you, Wanderers, for a question. Uh, Eye of Horus, please. The Eye of Horus. Ah. This is the music question. What is the connection between these audible clues? Here's the first. Yep, next. 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 Sweet dreams. Given that all my dreams are sweet, I will accept that answer. Talk me through what we heard. I know we had Once Upon a Dream. Yeah, uh, Once Upon a Dream from... Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty, yes. What's that based on, do you know? Um, it, the, the, that song was based on the Tchaik Tchaikovsky. Yeah, um, Tchaikovsky's ballet, that's yeah. absolutely right. The 1959 film Sleeping Beauty, Once Upon a Dream. Um, and then Sweet Dreams are made of these, the rhythmics. Yes. And we don't know the first two. <laughs> Après un rêve, Foray, that was the second one, sung by Barbara Streisand. The first one, Elsa's Dream, from Act One of Lohengrin by Richard Wagner. Vikings, what would you like? Uh, lion, please. Lion. OK. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. These are children of... Do we, do we know? 
next place. No, no, no why is it there? Next place. Oh. Right, so are those, are the bottom ones pets? Charlotte's Web. Yeah. Charlotte's Web, yeah. It's handed across. It's, it's real good to pick, isn't it? Yeah. I think we need next. Next place. Two seconds. Oh, it's, uh, right, it's players within a play then, is it? Um, characters in players within a play. Not it, I'm afraid. Wanderers, a possible bonus point. Oh, it's really stuck. No. Don't know we it? We haven't got this one, no. no. If I ever get a guinea pig, I am definitely calling it Lenin. But that's not what it is. It's to do with plays. Tom Stoppard plays. These are all characters in Tom Stoppard. That last one, of course, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. That's where Tom Stoppard takes the two minor characters from Hamlet and uh, puts them into his title. Septimus Thomasina Plautus the Tortoise. They're from Arcadia. Arcadia, where academics are researching old things. James Joyce, Tristan Zara and Lenin. Travesties. Travesties. And it's based on the idea that... James Joyce, Tristan, Zara and Lenin were all in Zurich at the same time. And they all meet in that play. And the first one, do you want to have a go? Tom Stoppard play that I haven't mentioned yet? Jumpers. It's the real thing. Huge Tom Stoppard fans here. <laughs> Perhaps we'll, we'll put on a production at the end of the show. No points there then, but Wanderers, you may have your own question. Uh, water, please. Water. OK, what is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Next. Laughs. Now, is this something to do with asterisks or something? Mm -hmm. uh, next, please. Plus, French translations of nursery rhymes. Yeah. Yeah. French versions of nursery rhymes. I need to hear something specific in this quarterfinal. Jump in something. The, the, yeah, the, original was in, the original was in French and it's translated it's into English. English. I'm afraid that's not it, so I'm going to show the last clue to the Vikings for a possible bonus point. It's, it's transliterations of... Um, so it's phonetically um, nursery rhymes written in French. Of course, the last one is patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. That's what it is. They're not <laughs> translations, they're transliterations. If you translate these into English, it'd be gobbledygook. It would be a small of a small. Mm -hmm. It, it, but it's if you say them out loud, un petit d'un petit, humpty dumpty, écurie <laughs> des curés doc, l'île <laughs> d'eau and pas de cake, pas de cake, bécasse man. <laughs> it's just nonsensical <laughs> French words that sound like the titles. Here's one for you. Which nursery rhyme would translate as queen, queen, arouse the rabble who use their girdles, horror, as pillow slips? Shall I translate it for you? Ring, 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 Ren, ren, go éveil, go again on horror day. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? So a bonus point to you, Vikings, and what would you like? Uh, two reads, please. Two reads, OK. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Well, a lot of us have Yeah. <laughs> 73 <laughs> years, done it. Um, next, please. So, oh, um... I mean, what, did they all lead to fights in um, Parliament? We could have done. Like actual fist fights. Let's go next. Next, please. Oh, originally they voted no, and then... Uh, that's it. Originally the, the, the referendum was uh, a no, but then they ran the referendum again, it was yes. Nominate. When they first had an, a referendum to see whether the, the Colombian government should do a, a peace deal with FARC, it was voted down. But then they had another referendum and it was accepted. I'm afraid I can't accept that as an answer. And let's have a look at the last clue. Possible bonus point to you, Wanderers. 2016 referendums. Yes, now I'm afraid you went too specific. In your last question, you weren't specific enough. That's too much because it doesn't apply to all the clues. They simply were referendums, some might say referenda, that were held in 2016. If I had to sum up what this programme is, the fact that we go from Humpty Dumpty to Italian constitutional <laughs> reform in about 20 seconds. So you get the bonus point in that time at Wanderers, and you get the last question of the round, the twisted flax. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Uh, next. Is this something missing, like a calorific or something like that? Uh, next. 
which is to write, these are all kind of fake scientific theories or something like that, they've got debunked. Go for it. Are these sort of scientific theories that got debunked? I'll accept that. Can you tell me anything else? No, no, that's the, only, that's the only one I have, so yeah. These are the substances at the centre of scientific theories. The last one, luminiferous ether. That's a, an idea from the late uh, 19th century that, that light has to flow through something, so there must be something in the uh, air that light can go through. Do you know about any of the others? What's odile? It means nothing to me. Well, it's a sort of life force. This was a scientific theory from the 1840s, that it causes electricity somehow, a life force. Caloric was a, a self-repelling fluid to explain the flow of heat from hot objects to cold ones. The third clue, do you know what that is? That's when they didn't understand sort of combustion and oxygen and when they burnt something, they thought it gained negative mass or something like that. Well, that's right. They thought that a substance flowed out of it oh. when you burnt it, that it sort of released a substance. Yeah. That's right, they are debunked scientific theories. That means at the end of round one, the Vikings have three points, the Wanderers have four. <laughs> And we flow like a fiery substance onto round two. Vikings, if you're going first again, which hieroglyph would you like? Uh, the Eye of Horus. The please. Eye of Horus. What might come fourth in the sequence? Your time starts now. Um, next, please. Just how we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, just swap. Oh, so, uh, so, Gal, uh, Gal, 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 Wanderers, what would you like? Horned Viper, please. The snake for you. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Go on, uh, Next. Next. Seems like there's sort of stages of learning or something like that. Something. Philosophy or classics or something. It's worth a guess something, isn't it? First and classics? Yeah. First and classics. Far from it, I'm afraid. Vikings, do you want to have a go for bonus point? Uh, first religion. And why would that be? Um, I'm already flailing, so I really couldn't give you any more. The answer is first animals. These are all comedy tours by Ricky Gervais. Oh. Any fans of Ricky Gervais over there? No, no but my not. hate for him would have... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, did, would have I knew I'd recognised that for some reason. And... He was asked on Twitter, how do you feel about the American office being better than the British version? He responded, rich. <laughs> all Ricky Gervais comedy tours and next in the sequence would be animals. So no bonus points there. Vikings, you may choose your own question. Uh, water. Please. Water. OK. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Uh, um, yeah, it's up the anything. Uh, next, please. Are these books? Yeah, it looks like... these books by the um, Prime Minister's or President, isn't it? Of Germany, perhaps? Oh, it's my... Yeah. OK, uh, next, please. Yeah, I'll get to US President, so the art of the deal, something like that, that, um, that Trump's written. The art of the deal, is that one of Hayes? Just, 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 yeah. OK, well... Um, please don't buy it, but the art of the deal. Is exactly the answer we chose ourselves. What is happening here? Um, that successive US presidents have um, written books. Who are those presidents? Um, working backwards from Trump, um, Obama, and um, George Bush. George, yeah, George. Bush. Jim George yeah, W. And Bush, Decision Points, and My Life, Clinton. Bill Clinton. Mm. Is that a very well known book, The Art of the Deal? You thought of that one, and so did our question writers. Have you read it? I uh, haven't, no. No, I've made all of my deals without it. What else might I have accepted as the fourth clue? I mean, you could Featuring guess that. these. Time to get tough, making America number one again. <laughs> 
Think like a champion. Surviving at the top. The art of survival. The America we deserve. The way to the top, the best business advice I ever received. Think like a billionaire. I definitely do think like a billionaire and spend like a billionaire. The only problem is I'm not a billionaire. Think big and kick ass in business and life. Trump 101, the way to success. How to get rich. And the best, of course, golf advice. That's golf <laughs> advice. He's written that one. Very well done. Wanderers, back to you for a question. Uh, lion, please. The lion question. What would come forth in this sequence is the first. Uh, next. Yeah. Bridge. I'm afraid that is not the answer. So I'm going to the third in a sequence of the Vikings for a possible bonus point. Uh, yeah, the finish line. <laughs> I'm afraid that's not the answer. The answer is, unluckily for you, Barnes Bridge. Barnes Bridge. Mm. What's the sequence? It's uh, to do with the boat race. race. That's right, they're timing points. So ah, in the Oxford okay. and Cambridge University boat races, they start with the, whatever you call the front bit of the boat. The, the, the bow. Bow, is it? The front bit is, uh, it lines up with the university stone. And as they row, do they row? They row, don't they? are not sailing. I'm not big, on, uh, not big on boats. As they move through the water, they pass the milepost, Hammersmith Bridge, and you get timings for where they are at those points. But geographically, Barnes Bridge is what you'd expect, not Putney. So, no points there. Vikings, what would you like to boat towards this time? Uh, twisted Flax. The Twisted Please. Flax. OK, what will come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Singer and race, 57. Um, no, look at their German names. It could be the first year of his song contest, that was about that. Oh, but okay. I don't want see. Yeah, sequentially. I think, oh, next, please. Go on back, please. That's a good start. Um, 53. What one was Valare? Was that much later? I don't know. Uh, possibly, yeah. Um, next, please. Yes, yeah, so somebody who won oh, it. I, um, that's probably people climbing Everest, so say. Oh, Hillary. Wow, Hillary. Hillary. Beautiful. Okay. I don't know. It's OK. Um, 53, Hillary and Tensing. And just give us a blast of Valare. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is Hillary and Tensing, 1953. What's going on here? Uh, yeah, these are people who conquered Everest in those respective years. Now, it actually isn't Everest. They are all the first climbers. It's different mountains getting higher. So, wow. Luxinger and Rice, that's Lotse, the Swiss climbers, first to climb up Lotse, and then Kanchen Junga, Brown, 1955. They were British climbers, and uh, it said they never got completely to the summit because they were respecting local beliefs that you don't tread on the snow at the top, but they got as close as you can. So, who do you think uh, these people are in clue three? K2, presumably. First people to... Climb K2 and then Hillary and Tenzing, the highest mountain, of course, Everest in 1953. Well done. Wanderers, one question remains for you. The two reads, what would come forth in this sequence? They will be picture clues, so I want to know what sort of thing you'd expect to see in the fourth picture. Time starts now. And, uh, so it's not. No, don't know. Next. No trinky, so this is all rules in the small part. No pets, no monkeys. No pets, no monkeys. No dogs, no monkeys. Next. Oh, um, yeah, heavy petting, it's the pushing in the swimming pool. So is it on? Go on, yeah. I don't know. Uh, pushing, the biting. Oh, no. No problem. Drinking, biting, pushing, the press it. Two seconds. There you go. No heavy petting, a picture of somebody kissing. I love so many things about that answer. I wish I could give you points. I love it as an idea because it's brilliant. I love it that the suggestion for illustrating heavy petting would be kissing. It's all brilliant. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not the answer. <laughs> Vikings, you want to have a go for a bonus? Uh, yeah, no smoking. I'm afraid that's not it. Let me tell you what would be in the fourth picture. It would be a seesaw with an elephant at one end and a butterfly at the other. Of course, that doesn't help. What if I told you that the rules being suggested by these pictures are no animal shall sleep in a bed, no oh, animal so shall drink far, alcohol, no animal shall kill any other animal, and I want to hear all, all animals, animals are, are equal. equal. 
What is the sequence? Animal Farm. Farm. It is the seven commandments of animalism in George Orwell's Animal Farm. What happened to Animal Farm in 1944 when it was sent in for publication at Faber and Faber? It was published as a children's book. It wasn't published at all. It was rejected. T.S. Eliot, director of Faber and Faber, said, we have no conviction that this is the right point of view from which to criticise the political situation at the present time. Nice guy, T.S. Eliot. It was rejected, but then it was published the following year, 1945, Animal Farm by George Orwell. At the end of round two, the Wanderers have four points, the Vikings have ten. I'm now going to invite the teams to make themselves comfortable up against the wall. It's time to connect 16 clues into four groups of four. You'll be going first this time, Wanderers. Would you like lion or water? Lion, please. OK. Two and a half minutes to solve the lion wall, starting now. Oh, there's a computer there, so acorn, orange, apple. Shall we go through this up together? Yeah. 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 Uh, we've okay. got fruit, uh, looks like. Apple, that's probably going to be too simple. Uh, should we try mango? Apple. Do you want to go for it, yeah? Mango. Go for it. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. Mm -hmm. So, some okay. types of wood, harlequins, multicolored things. Um, should we also? Sure. There's a word one, there's going to be a word one. Okay, right, let's have a look for that. What's, what's Bruce then going to be? Who's Fiona Bruce? Who's yeah. Bruce Forsyth? Phillips is a. Uh, is a TV presenter? Is yeah. that Sally Phillips? Should we, should we put some surnames in and see what happens? Okay, I'll do that. Find another surname if you want. Alright. Harry Lyme. Harry. Harry. Harry Lyme. Fiona. Fiona. Fiona Phillips. Fiona Bruce. Fiona Bruce. Fiona. Right, do you want me to go through? Yeah. Yeah, go on. Oh, you got that one. Nice. Oh, that one. Three lives now. Right, okay. so. So, what have we got left? What else is Rambo in? Um, call it some Harlequin. Anagram one. Is it an anagram one? Mile. Is it a pronunciation thing? Okay. Five. Rambo. 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 Maybe there is fruit, but there's a obscure then. one. But we should do that. Harlequin could be a fruit. Go for a Harlequin as a fruit. We've not got unlimited lives. Okay. Right, but also. There's wood. What well, animals is harlequin? It's a harlequin duck. Is it another duck? Is this some duck? No. Description. Should we, should we try yeah. some fruit yeah. again and see? Just try another one. Pick one. Rambo. Oh, one more. Yeah. Yeah. Is I bet fruit's a red herring. Is that? <laughs> Ten Do you seconds. Want to go for wood. Did we go for the wood already? Go for it. Nope. That's your three lives. The wall has frozen, but you found two groups on this very difficult wall. Can you tell me the connection? Acorn and so forth. Home computers, I think, from the 80s. Yeah, they're former computer brands. And the green group, Shaw, Phillips, Bruce, Apple. They're all Fiona's. That's right, Fiona Shaw, the actor. And you can still get points for the connections in the groups you didn't find, so let's resolve the wall. Here we go. Mango, Balsa, Hive, Rambo. Change one letter, there are dance. That's what I'll go for. Change one letter. Very well <laughs> spotted. You <laughs> change a letter and they become tango, salsa, jive, mambo. Really hard to see in the wall. Well done yeah. for seeing it there. <laughs> right. Hidden dances. And the last one, lime, avocado and so forth. Green. green. They are all types of green. So you found two groups and gave me four connections. That is a total of six. Let's bring the Vikings back now and give them the other wall. It's the water wall for you Vikings. You should be comfortable with that. Two and a half minutes to solve it. Starting now. There's cattle, aren't there? There's islands. Yeah, Guernsey. Uh, 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 Ponder and Mull. Brood. Right. Yeah, Fisher. Shannon. Shannon. Yeah, let's come on. Three um, lives now. John Quill is sort of yellow, it's also flowers, isn't it? But Angus. Guernsey, Jersey, Jersey and Red Pond Jersey. are all what would, cattle. And what would be the other four? Sounds like John Quill. Red, red. Yes. A rose. So rose, red, red, red. John Quill. Yeah. Okay. Rose, red, white. John Quill, and that's because it's a yellow. Is it not? But John Quill's a bit like a daffodil. Same colour, similar colour. Well, we've still got some time, so. Let's try it. That's it. It's all the wall. Very well done. <laughs> so that's four points immediately. What about the connections? Ponder and so on. Oh, well, that would be to, uh, to think on. That's it. All things you didn't really need to do during that wall. And the green group, starting Shannon. 
Uh, but did we say shipping? The shipping forecast areas. Shipping forecast areas. Shannon, Bailey, Lundy, Fisher. And what about the next pink group starting reed or red? Well, John, the, 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 the homophones of, or the heterophones, I'm never sure which is which, of colours, red, jonquil, rose and white. Homophones. Homo, homophones. the same, hetero, different. And the last turquoise group starting jersey. And it's uh, cows, cows, cattle, 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 cattle breeds. Yeah. Jersey, red pole, Guernsey, Angus, simply breeds of cow. Mm. So that's four more points for the connections and the bonus of two for getting it all right. That is a maximum of ten. Very well done. Let's have a look at the overall scores. <laughs> The Wanderers have 10 points, the Vikings have 20. So, a bit of a turnaround needed, but it can be done, it's been done before. Lucky you've been practising. Fingers on buzzers, teams. I can tell you that the first group all begin with a soft C. Wanderers. Celery. Correct. Wanderers. Cerebellum. Correct. Wanderers. Celiac. Good voweling. Wanderers. Cipher. Correct. Next category, famous men given their wives' maiden names. Wanderers. William Middleton. Prince William. Vikings. Dennis Roberts. Better known as Dennis Thatcher. Vikings. Gordon, Gordon Sumner. That's Sting, Gordon Sumner, correct. Vikings. Daniel Weiss. Or Daniel Craig. Well done. Next category, Commonwealth countries and their largest cities. Vikings. Nigeria and Lagos. Correct. Wanderers. Australia and Sydney. Correct. Wanderers. India and Mumbai. Correct. Wanderers. Canada and Toronto. Correct. Next category, films featuring Marilyn Monroe. Wanderers. How to Marry a Millionaire. Correct. Vikings. The Seven Year Rich. Correct. That's it, the bell has gone for the end of the quiz and I can tell you after a very impressive round four, very good round for you there, John, the final scores are Wanderers 19, Vikings 25. So, Vikings, you are through to the next round. Wanderers, you're also through to the next round. Different sort of next round. I'm still struggling with the concept, but no one's going. These are quarterfinals. No one's through to the semis yet, and yet nobody's out either. Well done, everyone. Very good quizzing. And that's it. If this were a meal, we've had our starters, our main courses, and our puddings. And as the last of the missing Val's coffee slips away, all that remains is the bill, which is astronomical. It's tens of thousands of pounds. That's where the comparison sort of falls down. Compared with having a meal, a television programme is eye-wateringly expensive. It's, like, it's crazy money. It's ridiculous. You'll have to split it. Goodbye. <laughs>